this is uh, this is Ramon, and I'm back here with uh, with Ted, and uh, here at the Big Fuel offices. And thank you so much for Big Fuel for loaning us uh, the studio. Space. Thank you. A little bit, it's pretty awesome. Um, so, will will they buy from me if they like me? Um, you know, I know for a fact. I mean, I had experience when I first bought my Honda. Walked into the dealership. I, I I met a salesperson, and I immediately knew like I don't like this guy. Why? Because he's a car salesman. But when I met him, he was just soft-spoken, shook my hand, looked me in the eyes, said hello to my wife, asked me if I wanted coffee, walked me around the showroom floor, didn't direct me to the more expensive cars, asked me a lot of questions of what I want in a car. And that made me, quote-unquote, like him. And because, because of that, I actually purchased a car. I mean, do, do you think that is, that should be the case always with... with, 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 with I think what you're asking is, do people buy from people they like? Yeah. And, and, and what I like to say, I think it's really important, and you know I talk about relationships all the time, and this is return on relationship, but um, I think that people, and I've, I've learned this when I was at Elf Cosmetics, I started it there um, in the social environment, and then continued at Open Sky when I was ahead of social there, and now with Collective Bias, with all the brands we work with, I'm experiencing that people do like to buy from people they like. They prefer that. Now, just so we understand that, that doesn't mean people will buy from you because they like you. It means that all things being equal, people would prefer to buy from an experience they're comfortable with, from people they like, from a, a brand that is, is making them comfortable, than from somewhere where they don't. So, you know, it's very important because this could be your differentiator. And it sounds easy, like everyone could be nice. But the truth of the matter is it goes into company and brand DNA and how people are trained. And not everybody could be that way. And a term that I've been using lately um, is the word approachable. That I think a brand, a website, a store, it needs to be approachable. People have to be comfortable getting there. And, and a lot of companies don't do that. You walk in and immediately you feel like... You, but you why, why is the case? Why, why do you think it's the case? Why do you think it, if I walk into, I don't know, like a hammer coming fish, I, I automatically feel like, ooh, I shouldn't be here because I'm, I'm either too bald or too fat or whatever. You know, or, or, whatever. or too old. <laughs> or too you know, old. Well, you know what? I don't necessarily think that, that might be a mistake because right. Abercrombie, Abercrombie and Fitch is looking to attract my daughters, right. not necessarily us. Mm -hmm. Now, what I find is they don't make it impossible to be in there. Uh, and, and I like to joke, maybe they want me out of there, so I just give the credit card to my daughters and they spend more. Uh, but the music's loud. But again, we're not their target audience. That my kids love it in there. So they're doing something strong there. And right. we're at a point now, and I think we all are with our kids, that if they're comfortable in there, we're, we're, we're happy with that. We're comfortable you with know, that. We'll, we'll deal right. with it. Um, and, and a lot more kids are shopping on their own, and, and if mom's shopping for them, they're, they're, they might not be going in there as much. Right. Um, but a lot of it goes towards, I think, that the culture of a company. Mm -hmm. How important it is to you. Too many companies, I believe, think that price is the only difference. And, and, and when you discount heavily um, off, of your, off of your brand, this price, you know, you're hurting the brand. Because you get people accustomed to only buying at a discount. Mm -hmm. And if that's your only differentiator, then you become a commodity and you're just competing against other people in that way. But people I found, and I look to save every dime I can. I'm a divorced dad. I, I, I have to, my kids are getting ready to go to college. Um, I might be somewhat successful, but every dime is important to me. But I will pay a little bit more for a nice experience. I, I won't pay double. You know, I won't pay significant, but I will go somewhere where someone treats me well. And I think a lot of it has to do with engagement and interaction. So you look at credit card companies, or, or you look at um, banks, or you look at airlines, mm -hmm. and they're not going to make you happy most of the time for most of what you're looking for. It's an unfortunate business, though. Yeah. Yeah. But they, if they engage you, JetBlue engages you, Delta is now starting to engage you and answer your questions and make you feel like you're being heard, that's life. So, uh, it's not about love. So you, are you saying that it's not necessarily the, the, the brick and mortar company, it's more of what social tool they're using to actually reach out and communicate with you? You know, if companies focus on creating valuable content, value, it, unfortunately the word value is always thought of in relation to price. But I believe most consumers, most people, consider value something very different. I mean, yeah. social platforms that do well when people feel comfortable there, they, they, they're getting what they perceive as value. That value might be that they're not at home watching TV, they're being able to share it with somebody. I mean, everybody thought TV was going to go away the dinosaur because of the vast usage of social. But what is social doing now? It's increasing television, it's the television feeling because people feel that they're not that loser sitting at home watching TV by them. They're sharing it with three of their friends. Guys are watching sports and they're really watching it with their buddies and they're tweeting and talking about it. And now 
the, the, the networks are catching on to this and starting to involve those things. Look at platforms that can help them with these things. Now, Michael, I'm glad you're saying that because I see a lot of TV shows now that are, that are really, really going on using the hashtag. So if you're watching a show like Unforgettable, for example, or the hashtag Unforgettable, and I see more social information. It's as simple as and, and it allows people to interact with each other. And what does that add to? That goes right back to your original question. It makes people feel good. It makes them like that brand. Mm -hmm. More likely, whether it's to interact, to watch a TV channel, whether it's to shop in a store, whether it's to call a customer service department, whether it's to buy a um, a service. We, I believe that we do like to do business with people we like, and I think that we now have the tools to make people like us more by being involved with them and adding value in a different way. Yeah, I agree. And this reason why we do the show because I like Ted. That's right, and I like Ray. There you go. Alright guys, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you guys next time.